Hey, it's Rose. In this video, I'm going to show you how to make a pocket-sized notebook that is the perfect size to carry around in a Magic the Gathering deck box. You can also stick it in your wallet or your pocket if you find you need it for any of the other tabletop games you're playing. So here's what you're going to need. A hammer, a nail, an embroidery needle, embroidery thread, scissors, an exacto knife, a bone folder, a pencil, a bulldog paper clip, I don't know if they're called something else, but it's one of those like big clips, uh, a ruler, some scrap paper, a cutting mat, uh, a scrap piece of wood or something that you can hammer over top of that won't like dent your table or something, and then something for your notebook cover. So you can use thin cardboard, cardstock, or if you have old magic cards, those are the perfect size. If you are a supporter of mine on Patreon, um, this month I did a template that you can download. Here's a drawing time lapse of me making one of those covers. So for this one I was kind of going with um, sort of like a dark magic user elf kind of lady. Um, I thought it'd be cool if she was holding some kind of uh, staff with all these flames coming out of because I thought you could write something on it on your cover if you wanted to. If you wanted to keep track of your life points and magic or whatever you could write it in pencil and then erase it when you needed to. Um, I also just finished watching The Witcher on Netflix, which I really liked, so I feel like this is kind of influenced by Yennefer's character design on that show, but also not really. My process is the same as always. I do a light sketch, um, and then I usually turn down the opacity on that layer and then do a finer lined version on top of that one. And my tools are an Apple iPad and pencil and Procreate. Do you guys like seeing these time lapses? Um, let me know and I can keep putting these in or maybe take them out or, you know, just let me know in the comments. So now we can cut out the cover. So you can see that uh, the template is sized the same size as a magic card, which is roughly 2.5 inches by 3.5 inches. Just carefully cut that out if you're using a knife. I feel like that goes without saying, but also, I mean, you know, be careful. <laughs> so here are three different materials, uh, some thin cardboard, our template, and magic cards. So now we can cut our paper. I have about 15 sheets, I think, here. I didn't want it to be too thick, um, so 15 is usually like a good number. So you can just take your cover that you've already cut out and then trace it onto your stack of paper. Um, again, the dimensions are 2.5 by 3.5 inches, and then we can cut them out. So when you're cutting out a stack of paper like this, using a ruler and an X-Acto knife, you just kind of want to lightly press and go over it multiple times, so you're sort of cutting away layers gently. Um, don't force it, because you don't want the knife to slip and cut yourself or anything like that. If you have a paper cutter, I mean, that makes things even easier, so whatever works. So there's our stack of paper. So now we're going to want to punch the holes. So the first thing to do is to put your stack together with your cover and back cover and then get your clip and clip it all together. So this will help to make sure that nothing moves and then your holes will be in the same place. So using your scrap piece of wood and your nail, you're going to lightly hammer into this. The goal is to put a hole in and a marker but not to go all the way through because you're going to lightly do it on both sides. You can go all the way but I find it just kind of like rips the paper a little bit so being gently and going back and forth until you've punched all the way through is what I find to be the easiest. I mean you could use something like um, an owl punch or even a drill if you had that as well but this is what I have so this is what I'm using. So you can use your embroidery needle to poke it through the hole just to make sure that you went all the way through, which I did. So now we can sew it all together. So you're going to want about um, five times the width of your book. Um, so I'm using this uh, glittery thread, which was a mistake, so you're going to see me struggling to try to thread this needle. I feel like that's a common theme in my videos lately, is me struggling with a menial task. <laughs> but uh, eventually I got it in and it was fine. 
So when your needle's threaded, so you're gonna start going through the front cover of your book. Go all the way through to the other side. It might be, you might have to work it through a little bit when you're first going through the hole. So make sure to leave a bit of a tail and then go around to the front again. So then on the back side, you're gonna go across to the other hole and come out the front. Make sure to pull tight so the paper doesn't shift around. Then you're gonna go back through again to the back hole and out the front. So this is what it should look like at this point. Now again, back to front. And now you'll go long ways across the front again to the first hole. So through from front to back. Then around the side again. But this time, instead of going back through the hole, you're going to go around and then pull the thread underneath what you already have. And then you can tie that in a knot to secure it. And then trim the excess. I like double knotting it just to make sure it's a little more secure. But that's pretty much it. So you can rewatch this a couple times if you need to. Um, I also go through it again. So I like using a bone folder to make a crease on my cover. Um, it kind of gives the paper a guide on where to fold. If you don't have a bone folder, you can use the blunt edge of a butter knife or a spoon or anything like that. Again, I have one, so I use it. So now I'm gonna show you how to make another one. So this time we're just gonna use thin cardboard. Um, this is from, a, I think, a box of cookies. So it's the same idea. You have your paper cut. With this one, since we don't have holes marked on the template like we do on the download one, you're gonna draw a line about a quarter of an inch in from the edge and then mark two holes. So these are the holes that we're gonna punch. So you can see I left the paper out at this point. Hammer the nail through to make the hole. So these will be our guides. So take the clip off, put the paper back in, and then reclip it so that way the paper all stays together. Now we know where to put the nail so we can lightly hammer through again and go back and forth on both sides, doing it gently so you're not ripping the paper. So you can erase your line. I almost forgot to do that. And here I've pre-threaded the needle so you don't have to watch me struggle. And it's the same process as before. So you can make larger versions of this notebook with more than two holes. It just has to be an even number. And it's the same thing of just going in and out and around. So this technique is actually called um, stab binding, I believe. Uh, so you can look up more techniques about that if you're interested, or if you'd like me to do some more complicated book binding tutorials, I can do that as well. And then I decided to put a sticker on this one. I'm a person who has major sticker anxiety, so I just hold on to stickers because I'm afraid of like wasting them, which is really weird, I know. Um, but if you have a cool sticker, you could put a sticker on if you wanted to. I have a whole bunch of magic cards. I just decided to use some of the old like trashy ones that I don't like for a cover, and then it kind of blends in with my deck in my deck box, which I really like. So that's it. Um, you can see how it fits right in to your deck box. Um, the other deck that I play is a goblin deck, if anybody's interested. So I find that I need a lot of tokens all the time. So I'm always using scrap pieces of paper and sticky notes and things like that to write down 1-1 goblin or what have you. So for me, it's great to have a bit of paper 
already in my book instead of trying to, or already in my deck box instead of trying to scramble to find some wherever I end up playing. So thanks for watching. I hope you guys like that one. Um, you can like, comment, subscribe, follow me on social. And if you have any ideas for any upcoming videos, please let me know in the comments and maybe I'll do one.